So here is my completed and beautiful Dollar Tree Mother's Day style brunch. We have a fantastic menu here. A lot of choices, a combination of sweet and savory. And the all-in price for this was just $20. How amazing is that? Hi guys and welcome back. I have a very special Dollar Tree dinner planned for today. It is a Dollar Tree brunch and this is with Mother's Day or any sort of a special occasion in mind. So I did go to Dollar Tree this morning and I bought all the ingredients that I need to make a full brunch. I'm thinking that this will feed between four to six people. Um, some things kind of have a little bit more. You'll see when I go through all of the ingredients, but realistically speaking, I think that this is a nice little quaint brunch. I got a lot of variety, some sweet, some savory. And whenever I'm filming these intros, I have no idea how this meal is going to turn out. I am usually optimistic, of course, that it's going to be wonderful. And I didn't get anything sort of unfamiliar to me. So there's really no way that this could be bad. It's just a lot of times I'm looking up recipes and getting ideas. And then on top of that, I'm trying to like make Dollar Tree ingredients work towards particular situations. So there is a little bit of trial and error on my part. So some of these videos can seem kind of experimental in nature because they are. I oftentimes don't go into these with an exact recipe that I'm going to be making. More so I'm kind of winging it and just taking you along the journey with me. So let's go ahead and show you what all I got to make a Mother's Day brunch. So this is the first portion of the haul. This is the food portion. I have a jar of cream cheese frosting here. I'm actually going to make a glaze out of this because Dollar Tree pancake syrup is not the best. So I use this place of pancake syrup and I just thin it out with some water and make a glaze or warm it in the microwave. I also have two cans of fruit here. I have a can of mandarin oranges and a can of pineapple. Really, you can pick up any two cans of fruit your family will enjoy. I also have a box of their Hungry Jack pancake mix, which is by far the best pancake mix. A box of true lemon. This is just crystallized lemon because we are going to be making some lemon blueberry waffles. So I also have some frozen blueberries here. As a substitute for some cinnamon rolls, I got some pecan rolls. These are pre-baked, no work to do there. And then I also got two packs of bacon, which I'm just going to serve bacon crispy on the side. But I also got the ingredients that I need to make sausage rolls, which is a package of their Farmer John breakfast sausage some Frigo pre-shredded cheddar cheese, and a packet of biscuit mix. This is the cheddar garlic biscuit mix. My Dollar Tree does not always have margarine in stock, so since it was in stock today, I grabbed a tub of that, along with some English muffins so that we can just have some toasted English muffins with some margarine to spread on that. So that's the food portion. I have a couple other things to share too. I did leave room in the budget to get some juice. And if you include two bottles of juice, you come out to $20 even for everything. I got some Sunny D and some of this white grape peach healthy balance. So those are going to be my beverages. And now this is totally optional. If you have some serving platters, feel free to go ahead and use what you've got. But in the effort of making a beautiful holiday dinner, I thought I would show you a few serving platters that I picked up at Dollar Tree. The total for the serving platters came out to about $7. So I have this kind of round shaped one here. I also have a rectangular one. And so these are meant to look like faux crystal. They are made of plastic. I also got a couple of these large bowls. This comes in a two pack, which is perfect for our two cans of fruit. I got some little bowls to put the margarine and the glaze in so that they're not just in their original packaging. And then this silver kind of rectangular serving platter as well. I'm thinking that the English muffins will look really pretty kind of on this platter. And then the last thing was just some tumblers for the juice. But that is everything I've got. So it's $20 for the food and then $7 for the serving platters. But again, the serving platters are totally optional. I'm going to start with preparing the things that need to be baked in the oven. I have my oven preheating to 400 degrees and I'm going to go ahead and bake my bacon. That way I can do all eight slices at one time. It does cook very evenly and crispy in the oven. So that is a great method if you have the availability to do so. If not, feel free to cook this on your stove top. Dollar Tree bacon is relatively thin bacon, but it is four slices. So this will probably cook up 
Um, I got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. This will probably only take about eight to 10 minutes or so, but I'll pretty much just stop whenever it's as crispy as I like it. So I'm gonna set this aside for now while my oven preheats so we can prepare these sausage balls too. So here I have a little chub of sausage and mine is still partially frozen. So I am gonna have to thaw this out a little bit before we get started on our sausage balls. You can also go ahead and fry this up and just kind of make biscuits with the fried sausage and the cheese in it. But to make this as simple as possible, I'm gonna be using the kind of original Bisquick recipe, which is just sausage, cheese, and biscuit mix all mixed together. And you don't cook the sausage beforehand. It cooks in the oven when you go to bake it. So into a bowl here, I am going to add my package of cheddar garlic biscuit mix. along with my cheese. Of course, you can buy the blocks of cheese from Dollar Tree and shred them yourselves, but I was trying to keep this relatively simple. Because if you're preparing brunch, you're usually doing it in the morning, and so you wanna kinda make it as, as fast and efficient as you possibly can. So there is our cheese and our biscuit mix, and then we're gonna add in our sausage, and again, the sausage just goes in totally uncooked. This is a bit of a southern recipe here. Uh, typically served at like little southern gatherings and stuff. Sausage balls are a pretty common one, but as I mentioned, the the sausage does cook when you put it in the oven. You just don't pre-cook it beforehand because it almost becomes one with the biscuits when you make these. And now in my case, the traditional recipes for this call for one pound of sausage. I am only using one log, which is about half a pound of sausage. So I am gonna have to add a little bit of water to this to get it to the right consistency. I'm gonna start off with just adding about two tablespoons and then if I need to add more, I definitely can. But you really just want this to form together into a dough essentially. And don't be afraid to get your hands dirty too. I'm trying not to just knead this with my hands, but that is challenging because I feel like Sometimes your hands are the easiest tool for mixing if you don't have like a electric mixer, which I could definitely use my kitchen aid, but I try not to use appliances like that when I'm making Dollar Tree videos. Needs a little bit more water. And I do think ultimately I'm gonna have to go in here and mix this with my hands in order to get it to come together. A fork is just not an appropriate tool for doing this. So once you've got yourself a pretty cohesive dough, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a um, baking sheet and line it. I have my baking sheet lined. You can line it with whatever you have, parchment paper. I have a silicone liner here and you're just gonna roll your little biscuit sausage balls into about one inch balls. Let's see how many I get out of here. You can measure this for precision, but I'm just gonna eyeball them. So my little $3.75 Three ingredient sausage balls actually made 20 of these. So this is a fantastic option if you need something to bring to any sort of a party because it's really cheap and makes a lot. These sausage balls need about 12 to 15 minutes in the oven and the bacon only needs about eight to 10. So I'll check back in with you in just a second. There is our bacon out of the oven. I have a couple of trivets here. I'm gonna set this down and then I'm going to drain this on some paper towels just like when you're frying bacon. It usually doesn't really stick to the pan, but if it does, you can usually get it up pretty easily by just shimmying your like fork or spatula underneath it to kind of lift it up from the sheet pan. Now I like to go over it over the top with a paper towel too, just to get off all that extra fat and keep it nice and crispy because if that fat sits on there, your crispy bacon is going to become chewy bacon. So our bacon can get set aside while we work on cooking the rest of our meal. And at this point, these sausage balls are also ready. So I'm gonna set those aside and just let them chill. So here is where we get into the kind of more experimental phase here. I have my pancake mix, I have my blueberries, I have my powdered lemon, and then of course I have my cream cheese. Now the debate that I've had in my head is do I mix the lemon into the cream cheese for the glaze or do I mix it into the waffles? And I could do a little bit of both. So I'm gonna start by mixing it into the waffles. And then if I find it doesn't really pack enough of a punch, I can add some into the frosting, because this comes with 12 packets. So I have more than enough to work with here. 
Beyond that, my blueberries are pretty much thawed. I am gonna make sure that I drain these and check them for any stems because I don't want any of that in my waffles. And if I don't drain them, then they're gonna turn the whole batter blue. So here are my rinsed and drained thawed blueberries. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss the blueberries in a bit of the powdered waffle mix because that is a common trick to keep your blueberries from just sinking to the bottom of everything. The remainder of our waffle mix can go into a bowl here. To my waffle mix, I'm gonna add about two cups of water. Bearing in mind, you can always add more if you need to. And then I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of oil. This is also from Dollar Tree. This is their soybean and olive oil combination. Should be totally fine for this. That does need a little more water. So let's add in a quarter cup. And now we're gonna add in some of our true lemon packets here. I will probably, so each of these packets is equivalent to, it says somewhere on here. Each of these packets is equivalent to one wedge. So like, let's say, if I wanted to add about half a lemon's worth, then I'd probably need about four packets. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's reacting with the leaveners. I can hear it like fizzling. I didn't really think about how the acid would react with the leaveners in the pancake mix. All right, and that looks like a good consistency. So now we're just gonna go ahead and fold in our blueberries. I'm gonna show you a couple of different options regarding the waffle mix, because this is a good bit. So we can make some waffles and we can also make some muffins. So I'm just going to spray my little muffin pan here with some nonstick cooking spray. And then Measure it out if you want to. I have this little scoop here. This is from when I used to work at Taco Bell like 12 years ago. I don't know how long it's been. Um, <laughs> but it's about a quarter cup or so per muffin tin if you want to just use a measuring cup for that. And then I'm also going to pop this in the oven just to see how it turns out baked. My waffle iron is preheated. This one actually doesn't really need cooking spray, but if you've got it, it just helps. It gives you a little bit more of a crisp on your waffles. And just like I did with the muffins, I'm gonna throw on about a quarter cup of my waffle mix here. And just let that cook until it's ready. Here is my first waffle. The waffle maker just clicked to tell me that it's ready. That's how it indicates it's done, is that it clicks and the light turns off. Actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and set these on a plate while I work on some more waffles. And also a way that you can keep these warm is, and it doesn't really work in this situation because my oven is running, but you can put it in a low temperature oven just to keep things warm while you're preparing your other ingredients. Another thing you can do to multitask while you're cooking everything is to go ahead and pre-toast your English muffins. So you can just break these in half, they are pre-cut and then just lay them out on a sheet pan and bake them in your oven alongside everything else if you have room for it. Uh, you can also leave these untoasted if you have a toaster and let your guests kind of toast them as they go. For my glaze, I'm going to be adding my tub of cream cheese frosting. I'm probably not gonna be using the whole tub because I feel like that's a little bit of overkill. Maybe half the tub should work. It would be so easy to throw together a second batch of this if you needed to on the fly because it's kind of pre-made. So I'm gonna add about half of the tub into a bowl here. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of water to that. And because my waffles are not very lemony, I am gonna throw in a couple packets of true lemon to this as well. And then this can just get microwaved on like 30 second intervals until it is melted and combined. Another thing that I wanna mention is in regards to the canned fruit. This canned fruit is packed in a light syrup. It is packed in fruit juice, but you can save the syrup 
and use them as a sweetener for teas and stuff like that so that you can have a flavored tea beverage because the syrup is kind of naturally flavored by the oranges and the pineapples in which it's sitting in. So you can mix your fruit together if you want to make a bit of a fruit salad. I had hoped they would have some sort of a fruit cocktail, but I didn't really see any when I was there. So for mine, I am going to keep the pineapples and the oranges separate on their own bowls. And then I have this platter that I got to put the cinnamon rolls and the sausage balls and the bacon on. As I mentioned, there's no work to do here because these are pre-cooked. You can warm them if you want to in like the microwave or the oven just to get them warmed up a smidge, but otherwise they are good to use as is. Turn that around so you guys can see. Add in our little sausage balls here. Really stack them up any way that you like. I'm trying to leave some room at the front here for the bacon slices though. Now on go our bacon slices. Which I could probably spread out. Now that I know how much room the bacon needs on the platter, I can make it look a little bit fuller by spreading out my sausage balls a bit. There is uh, one of our trays set up. I am going to pour the cream cheese and lemon glaze in a couple of these bowls. Which by the way, this glaze is fantastic. I'm also going to transfer some margarine into one of these bowls. This will just present a little bit more elegantly than having this little tub, essentially. You can smooth out the top with the back of your for or back of your spoon. And then all of my English muffins I pre-toasted in the oven just to get them warm and toasty. And then I have them kind of laid out on this little silver platter here. And then the very last platter to assemble is going to be our waffle platter. So I do have the kind of muffins that I made and I can set those on here as well. And it gives you a look of variety even though it was the same ingredients just prepared a different way. And now if you want your waffles to be kind of made fresh, you can definitely do that as well. You don't have to go through the process of pre-making them like I am here. You can definitely have them freshly made for each of your guests. Or like I said, keep them in an oven, low temperature oven, about 170 to 200 degrees just to make sure that they stay hot and crisp for your guests. And of course we even still have some beverages for guests to choose from. So all in all, I feel like this is an amazing little spread. And now if you were a family of four or say you had three guests over, then here is an accurate representation of a plate to feed about four people with this meal. So I've got one muffin, I've got two waffles here, I've got four sausage balls, two slices of bacon, I have a cinnamon roll, an English muffin of some fruit here. And so there will be some leftovers with this because we have 12 waffles, we have six English muffins. So some people will have the ability to even go back for seconds until things run out. We do have to try everything though. So you all know that I absolutely thrive for making holiday meals with only Dollar Tree ingredients. It is one of my favorite things to do by far. I love being able to show you that the possibility of Dollar Tree food is almost endless if you just get creative with the ingredients that they have. I'm going to start off by trying the sausage ball, which for transparency, I have already eaten one of these because they're one of my favorite kind of hors d'oeuvres, I guess you could say. And these are no exception. They are salty. They are cheesy. You get that hint of garlic and sausage in there. Mm, these are fantastic. Now we have our bacon here, which I've tried Dollar Tree bacon many times. It's just regular bacon, folks. You just get four kind of thin slices, but if you only had a dollar or two dollars and you wanted some bacon, this is a great way to go. The pecan twirls I have also tried before. I know that they are really sweet and typically I would probably serve a little bit of that drizzle over top, but I do find, find that that makes them a little bit too sweet. Such a great option though if you're craving a cinnamon roll. They're pre-baked and ready to go. We of course have our Dollar Tree toasted English muffin here. I love real butter as much as the next person, but I grew up on country crocs, so margarine has a bit of a special place in my heart because it always reminds me of my childhood. I have no qualms with margarine whatsoever. I think it is a really good, inexpensive butter substitute. 
Of course, we have our canned fruit here. There's nothing really to talk about there. I only included the fruit so that we could say that we had a bit of a balanced breakfast, <laughs> I guess you could say. I am most excited to try my blueberry lemon waffles, though. I'm really excited about this because this was just a product of my brain and I wanted to do something kind of special and not just like your run-of-the-mill waffles. And then I thought to myself, blueberry lemon sounds amazing. And I thought about the cream cheese glaze. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So let's see how well it turned out. That is basically like dessert. It is so rich. You get that tart little bit of blueberry, a hint of lemon. I think most of the lemon comes through in the frosting. So I'd probably stick with just either doing it the way I did where I put a little bit of lemon in each or you could potentially just put the lemon in with the cream cheese frosting and that would kind of create that blueberry lemon glaze. But overall, they are fantastic. They're not overly sweet. I think that the blueberries really balance it out. I did spread a little bit of margarine on top of them too, which offers some saltiness, cuts back on the sweetness. That's kind of in a sense my main course here and it turned out amazing. I did make some into muffins just to save myself some time and offer you some extra variety using these same ingredients. The muffins are decent, but the waffles are definitely better. So I could have made 18 waffles with this batch, or the 12 and the 6, so it's totally up to you how you want to do this. I don't know how many people recreate my holiday meals, but I hope it just offers you a point of inspiration. So muffins are okay, waffles top notch. We do have a couple of juices to try. Of course, I have tried Sunny D in my lifetime. I know what Sunny D tastes like, but I have not tried this white grape peach, and this is the healthy balance, so it is the lower sugar juice. We're going to see how this is. It says it has... 10 calories per serving. So I wanted to include kind of a lighter option because we do have a bit of a heavier meal here and you can definitely add some sparkling water or some of their sparkling cider to this to make it a little more festive. I am personally no stranger to low sugar or sugar-free beverages. So to me, this tastes totally fine. It does taste like artificial sweetener as most diet drinks do, but it does just taste like grape and peach, and the peach flavor is very mild, which I appreciate. And there you have it. There is my Dollar Tree Mother's Day brunch. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helps some of you guys out. As always, have a fantastic day, and I will see you again soon.